Oh, hey, good morning, everyone. Hey, it's uh, Dave, Chewy's Backyard Farm. Um, I wanted to do a little something a little different today, starting a, a different uh, series with our channel or a uh, different videos with our channel. I just want to do it from the tractor seat, my thoughts from the tractor seat. So, um, I want to start off with the reason why. Um, that is the rooster over here that hates me. Um, been to that later probably anyway I want to start off with uh, why, why am I doing this um, just start with why so I'll let everybody know why why I decided to farm um, well uh, first off as I guess as a kid I had two things that I really wanted to two dreams in life that I wanted to do one was be in the military another was farm um, I know it's crazy but um, I guess I have a maybe a heart for service and that's kind of why I wanted to do it so I uh, I grew up around farming grew up on a farm my grand my grandfather had a small tobacco farm about 75 acres in southeast Kentucky so I grew around up around it I was in future farmers of America I was even part of the leadership team in both when I was in junior high and, and high school so um, uh, unfortunately in 89 uh, my grandfather passed away. My granddaddy, Poppy, passed away. Uh, my cousin Roger and I was there when it happened. And um, so I kind of lost that um, mentorship. I lost that uh, support. Um, so that kind of that kind of actually put me back a little bit, to be honest with you. Um, and for a long time, i got to be 100% 100 honest, I was, I was mad at God and, about that and, and really was upset about it. But I've learned to, uh, that ain't the right way to be. But anyway, um, so when I was 19, I went in the Air Force. Um, we still had the farm there in Kentucky. When I was 19, I went in the Air Force, and my grandmother, about three years later, two or two and a half, three years later, she wanted to sell the farm and move into the, into the city. And I, I tried to buy the farm. I actually did. I had a good, steady job. Um, I, I I was making decent money for the time. It was probably 92 or 93. Well, the bank turned me down. The bank wouldn't give it to me. So we lost it. We lost that that property. And uh, there was no reason for me to go back to, to Kentucky because uh, what I wanted to do in the future was no longer there. So I just served. I just stayed in the Air Force and made a career out of it, and I loved it. I did. Um, but as the, the military brought me to various places, um, I actually got out for a little bit, went to work as a correctional officer, and then 9-11 happened, and it brought me back in, and uh, I stayed with it after that. And it brought us to Georgia, and after after my kids were grown and in high, out of high school almost, I decided, I talked with my wife, talked with Katie, and we said, you know what, we need to get out in the country, and we want to farm. So, um, decided to uh, look for, for acreage. Now, look, it, acreage is expensive. And if you have no background in farming, you can't go to a the USDA and ask for a loan. You can't go to the farm credit and ask for a loan because they're going to be like, "Hey, you got to you don't have any background." So we started out on a. We said, "Okay, we got to get out of the super subdivision, move out into the country." We started out on an acre and a half, take our backyard, um, and literally turned it into a farm. We basically grew crops, uh, we grew vegetables, tomatoes, squash, cucumbers. And then we started finding a market. We found a couple of markets, and the demand was just so much that we said, you know what, we need to expand. And we kept thinking about, hey, we need to expand. We need to get bigger. And uh, so in 21, right in the middle of the pandemic, right in the beginning of our growing season, I started looking at how much our house would, was actually worth and decided right then and there to sell it and go look for more land because if the market was up, um, which kind of sucks for buying, but the market was up, so we figured, hey, let's go ahead and sell. We sold in the middle of the season and moved to 20, our 28 acres that we're on right now. And we were growing produce to begin with, and I started looking at the numbers and saying, listen, produce, unless it's in big volumes, just doesn't really pay the bills. It's tough on a small farm when you're growing produce. And anybody that does that would agree. So I started doing research, started doing, um, looking at what the market wanted and nobody had. And so um, that's when I got into pasture poultry is because nobody did it. It's tough. It's hard. It's a lot of risk. But I, I really love it. And I, I really uh, want to continue to do it and continue to make it better and get bigger and support more customers throughout the year. 
So, um, a little bit about the name, which is kind of sad. My name's not Chewy, I'm Dave. Um, it's a little sad right now, and that's why I haven't posted in a couple of weeks. Um, our dog, Chewy, uh, was a miniature schnauzer that we had from basically when he was about uh, 10 months old or whatever. A little story behind that, it came from work at Dobbins with someone else that I worked at, worked with that just couldn't handle him. And so I ended up with the dog. Um, he was a little persnickety, but he was a great dog. Uh, we lost him two weeks ago. Um, he was 15 years old. And the reason is the reason the farm's name's Chewy's Backyard Farm is because we literally were, were working our backyard and um, had it all plowed up and everything, and we were working it and everything. And, and he always, we had these two big glass windows in our house. One was in our, our breakfast nook, the other was in our living room. And he would always stand at that, stand at that back windows and bark at any crow or anything that came through that yard. So, um, I didn't want to just name it after our last name because that's what everybody does. So I wanted something a little unique, and, and I said, you know what, it's his backyard, let me ask him if I can farm it. And and there's a picture, I'll post it right here in a minute, and and that's literally where I was sitting asking him, hey, can I, can I work this backyard? I know it's corny, but um, it's part of our story. Um, it's The name's not going to change. Uh, like I said, we did lose him. It's been sad. Um, it's been hurtful, but you know what? Um, he had a great life. We enjoyed him. I'll, we'll see him again, I know. We'll see all our pets again, all our family members again, I guarantee it. Um, and um, if you're a believer, um, and I'll, I can talk about that more if you just want me to ask, just ask me. Um, but anyway, um, so we'll we'll see him again, but but he, he's no longer with us. But we're going to keep his memory on, and, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I haven't been posting in a while is because we've just kind of been struggling through this. Um, but we're going to be back to normal. We're going to be posting more stuff, more videos. And I'm going to do this from the tractor seat. So I want to just tell you why. Um, the basic of why I want to do this is because I want to serve people. Um, is I, I, wanna, I want to, I, I don't want to just be a, a, a cog on the wheel of the corporate world. Um, and I want to serve people. I want to give, I want to give, I want to provide, I want to be a provider. I want to be providing people with good healthy food um, I left a really good job after I retired uh, in the Air Force um, I went to work for the US Department of Labor um, I was a government employee I was making six figures uh, be honest with you I was it was really good I was traveling a lot I had a cushy job I had a cushy government employee job um, and I left that because I wanted to follow my dream I'm getting old um, I didn't want to be decrepit broke down uh, not being able to get off the couch and say, yeah, I wish I'd have farmed. I wish I'd have taken the risk um, and do it. Um, so it was it was my dream. It's, it is my dream. It's crazy. Um, and I, I just, I left that, um, took all our retirement and invested in it. And my plan is I'm hoping to keep this going and pass it on to future generations because it's really not a farm unless you've got future generations that's going to work it. So now with our first grandchild... I'm going to turn that into, I'm going to hopefully bring him up, raise him up on this farm, God willing. Uh, God lets me live through it, but lets me, lets me uh, pass it down, and I'll do it. Because um, i got to be honest with you, um, faith has been really, uh, uh, it's been really important to me in this, because uh, if you want to test, if you really want faith, you really want to know how much you are in control of stuff, you start farming because you start taking the risk of putting a seed in the ground, buying a chicken and trying to raise it up to get it to, to either produce eggs or, or produce meat, buy a cow, try to figure out, okay, how am I going to feed those? And then you're at the mercy of, of everything. Um, you're at the mercy of the weather. You're at the mercy of the markets. You're at the mercy of life and death. Uh, you get a cold snap when you've got a thousand pepper plants in the ground and you don't have enough grow cover, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose that investment. Um, and farmers work incredibly hard year-round to bring you food. I work incredibly hard to bring you the food. Um, I'm never going to get rich at this because there's just not, it's not gold mining, okay? It's not gold mining. It's farming. Um, but I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep bringing it to you. 
because it's part of my inner being. It's part of what God made me as. He made me to be. Uh, he made me to serve others, basically, and that's what I've always done. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm doing. It. It's because I want to provide good, clean, healthy food, um, and. I want, I want people with this video, with this YouTube channel, I want all my customers as well as others to see what we do. Um, now, I hope a lot of you don't copy it and take money and take all my, my, my you know, revenue away from me. But um, I just want to show my customers what is, you know, what's going on here. The good and the bad, the ugly, um, the mess ups, uh, the, the, the negatives and the positives. Uh, because we're getting to a time, I think, in our culture where, well, in our world, in America, where we need these small farmers. Um, you know, the average age, I watch a lot of farm news, the average age is, is 59 of a farmer. Now, I'm not far off from that, to be honest with you. Um, and there's a lot of fam family farms that just, you know, they, they're not going to they're not gonna keep pursuing it because there's, you know, the, the diesel fuel's crazy. Um as I sit on a tractor, equipment's crazy, um, you know, crazy prices. So it's like, okay, how do we keep growing farms? Because we still all got to eat. The world ain't getting any smaller. And yeah, we're the bread basket. I mean, we're the bread basket out in the West. We're, we're making, where we're producing corn and soybean, which is a lot of, a lot of that's feedstock for animals. But we got to, we got to fill some holes with some small farmers. Um, and, as a consumer, you've got to go and you got to go visit those farmers markets on those Saturdays, on those Thursdays, on those Wednesdays, on those Tuesdays, and Mondays. Every chance you can, go to a farmers market. Yeah, you're going to pay maybe a little bit more, but if that's a good market, you're going to have nothing but producers, and those producers are bringing you their highest quality product, their highest quality cucumbers, their highest quality breads, jams, jellies, chicken, beef. Go, go, you know, go spend a little extra. Don't give that money to Walmart, to Ingalls, to Kroger, um, to, you know, don't give that money to those big guys. Look, I'll even say if you got an IGA or a Piggly Wiggly in your, in your local area, go shop to there. They're at least a little smaller than Walmart and, well, I should say China Mart and Ingalls and Publix, Kroger. Look, I'll call them out. That's commercial, big, big farming. You're not getting the highest quality there. All you're doing is propagating and continuing either a foreign country, which a lot of your fruits and vegetables are coming from down down in South America, um, and their woke ideas, and I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm about this. I'm about this. But anyway, um, so go, 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 go and shop your small guys. Go to your farmer's markets. Get in contact with, your, with a local farmer. Man, I'm telling you, you're, gonna, you're going to see a difference, and you're going to really, really... Um, enjoy it you're gonna be see what you're getting your money worth you know so but anyway thanks for watching uh thanks for if you've subscribed thanks for liking if you've not subscribed and this has come up in your side feed there on youtube hey take a look subscribe um it's not gonna cost you anything uh you might get some good laughs out of it you might get to see some things that you didn't do that you never knew before and you could uh learn from it um so yeah like us like us subscribe uh, click that notification bell, um, and uh, yeah, just just keep track of, just watch what we're doing. Um, so, like again, like I said, thanks again for watching from uh, from this tractor seat and my thoughts. And you have a blessed day. Uh, remember, um, this is His kingdom, not mine. I'm just lucky to, I'm just blessed to be a steward in it. And you know, keep us in your prayers and uh, keep watching. You guys have a great day.